welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about the Stoger STR9 500 round review. So I took the Stoger STR9 to my local range and in between two days put 500 rounds through it. Uh, first day I did 200 rounds of S&B 124 grain and then the other day myself, Mark and Scott went and shot the other 300-ish. We went a little over 500 rounds. Uh, we shot a variety of uh, ammunition types from Winchester, Federal, and then ZSR and Turan, and they were all 115 grain or 124 grain. After the 500 rounds, we had one failure to feed, and it extracted the round before it, but failed to get the next one in there. And when we looked at it, the round had nosedived into the mag just a little bit. So we were able to pull the slide back ever so slightly and get that round to chamber. First failure. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. One failure. Failure to feed. Failure to feed. Good feed. Yeah. Could have been a combination of either a slightly weaker round ahead of it, or user error, or maybe just the gun for some reason. But 500 rounds, one failure to feed. And other than that, like I said, it's flawless. Initial thoughts when I opened the box on it was I liked kind of the fit and the features of it. And after, you know, putting 500 rounds through it, the three of us agreed that it's a pretty solid pistol. Ergonomics are good. I like the serrations on the slide, for example. I like the texturing on the grip. You could maybe add a little bit up here, but really that's kind of nitpicky. Uh, the texturing is good. The grip is good. The trigger is nice. All of us agreed with that. Uh... It's better than a stock Glock trigger, I would say that for sure. Maybe that's not saying much, but it's it's a it's a good feeling trigger. Maybe a little mushy in the front end, but when you hit the wall and the brake is really nice. When I got home, I used my Wheeler Tools trigger pull gauge on it and found it to be between five and five and a half pounds. And the reset is really nice. I was able to double tap quite a bit with it comfortably and easily. <laughs> The magazine in it, the spec from Stoger is 15 plus 1. I was able to actually fit a 16th round in there. So we found that kind of interesting. Um, most of the rounds that I shot, I loaded the 15 plus 1, and it ran flawlessly through that. And then eventually the 16 plus 1 just happened because all of a sudden I was putting an extra round in there. And then I started thinking and counting, like, wait a second, I'm shooting more than, you know, what I said it says I should. It is capable of doing 16 plus 1. I probably wouldn't recommend it just because you might be putting some extra strain on that magazine spring. But the 15 plus 1 ran flawlessly, like say, except for that one nose dive round. But uh, the kind of shortcomings to this gun is the aftermarket world for it. So it's not as popular as a, a SIG or a Glock 19, something like that. So the options to find holsters for it's kind of limited. After doing a little digging online, I found the Rounded by Concealment Express and Clinger holsters make inside the waistbands. And then Stoger makes a Kydex outside the waistband. Uh, price on those is between $40 and $65 is what it looked like. The aftermarket support is a little lacking on this gun. Just kind of three options I saw in the holsters. I tried looking at companies like Vetter and couldn't find an option for the Stoker. The other thing, so this is the base model, and it just comes with three dot sights. You can get aftermarket sights for, or not aftermarket, you can get night sights for it from Stoker. And I found those on Midwest Gunworks, and the front sight was like 50 bucks, the rear sight was 70. So you could add, you know, 120 bucks onto it if you really wanted to have the night sights. But Trigicon doesn't make any for it. I didn't see any other companies that had upgraded sights for it, so that's kind of disappointing there. But, like I said, it's not a Glock 19. It's not a SIG. It's kind of unique in its own right, so less aftermarket support is going to be expected on it. The other interesting thing on it is it does have the rail up front, and in this case I have a Streamlight TLR1. And it fits just like it should, and tightens it down and everything like it should. I did not shoot with this on there, but I wanted to just test it out and see. What I noticed on it is the lever is a little stiff and the reason for that is the front of the trigger guard has a little nub that sticks out so that little guy there makes contact with the lever on the streamlight so if you really had if you want to use one with the TLR1 you'd have to probably shave that down just a little bit to make that easier to function it functions fine it's not a terrible thing that it's a little tight but it also it's going to wear on the trigger guard it's going to wear on the switch on the 
flashlight itself. So I don't have a, other stream lights or anything else to check on. Unfortunately, I just have the TLR one. I got a couple of those laying around. So that's my best example of it. And like I said, a little tight. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna drop the bag and show you that it's clear. Drop the trigger. For comparison's sake, this is my Gen 4 Glock 19. And when you put them back to back, you can see the Stoger is ever so slightly longer. But the real difference that I noticed, again, lined up there. We'll do it this way so you can see it. What I really noticed though is a little bit of a grip difference. It's probably closer to like a Glock 17 grip length. But very comparable in size. So I think you'd have a fine time concealing it, but you are going to struggle. Not struggle, but you will have a little extra hanging out with this bigger, longer grip on it, more like a Glock 17. Um, so, take it apart here real quick for you to see. Oops. And I did clean this up just a little bit before the review, that way we can see the wear points and that kind of stuff. When I, before I took it to the range, I did go through and lube the contact points and the grip here. And everything seems to be wearing normal. Nothing egregious, nothing that I would, you know, want to call the manufacturer on and get it done. That seems fine there. The only thing I did notice is on the recoil spring. And it's got a little bit of wear around the edges. And I don't know if that's normal for this. I don't feel like I've seen this on other pistols of mine. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on as I go forward and shoot it. And then the barrel itself, just normal wear and tear. So... Nothing right home about, nothing egregious that I see on it. It looks to be wearing just fine. And I know 500 rounds isn't the end-all be-all. It's a fairly short review, but everything looks good so far. Put it back together here real quick. We kind of talked about the shortcomings of it, more or less aftermarket support and finding holsters is going to be your issue with this gun. But for the price being sub $300, and I just checked a little bit ago, places like Cabela still have this on sale for around $275 and there is still a rebate if you purchase one of these guns until the end of July of 2022 and then there's a mail-in rebate for $25. So you could get this gun for close to, you know, 275 out the door after the rebate or maybe 250. I found this on Gun Prime and I got it shipped for 218.99. So, deals are out there. There may be even more deals coming up on it. We had three different shooters through the 500 rounds to try it out and everybody seemed to be really impressed with it. I myself probably put the most rounds through it, but I noticed that I grouped fairly well when I went slow and I'll show a picture of that of a I think it was a seven yard group that I did and I shot mostly between seven and ten yards just to kind of see what I can do at that range um, I had three floaters kind of outside the bullseye and that's on me more than the gun in all honesty I'm a okay pistol shooter that's something I need to improve on I don't know a lot about the Stoger pistols much I don't know if this is kind of new in their world or I think they've had a couple before this line has a subcompact and a compact and then this full size and they've got some other options as well it looks like something with optics ready and that kind of stuff and those are going to get more expensive the str9 like this one the compact and the subcompact are all 275 dollars so there's options out there like i said you're going to struggle find a holster for it but if it's home defense gun or range toy even a carry gun if you get the right holster i think it'd be just fine for you i really enjoyed shooting it it's a pleasant experience like i said everybody was very impressed with it didn't have a lot of high expectations just because I didn't know a lot about the company or about the pistols before that. Final thoughts on the Stoger STR9. It's solid. We liked it. We all enjoyed it. Trigger was nice. Ergonomics are good. I like the slide serrations on the front. I like them on the back. It's a pretty well loaded pistol for the price. So if you're looking around to get one, especially with that rebate going on right now, I wouldn't hesitate to pick one up. 500 rounds we're good to go so far we'll keep it around and shoot more and if something happens in the future we'll for sure let you know but thank you so much for watching like share subscribe and we'll see you on the next video